it's Julie here. Better late than never, I hope. So if you were signed up for the three day challenge that we were running all weekend, I am so sorry about yesterday. Um, yeah, stuff happens, right? And I know that you as a dog parent fully understand that uh, sometimes we can, we can have the best laid plans, but then dogs. So apologies for any disruption and inconvenience I caused you yesterday. Um, I've actually got the little pupper lying next to me here. So I'm keeping my eye on him because there might be a dash to um, go outside at any minute, hopefully not while we're on. So the challenge itself is going to be rearranged. So I'm going to do that properly next month. And I know that's a long time to wait when you've got a dog with separation anxiety, you want to get them on the road to recovery and you want to do that now. That's why I'm going to give you a bit of extra access, access to the app. So you can have a look at the app, you can do some training using the app, and then at least all is not lost for this weekend. I um, hope that sounds okay. So that's what we're gonna do today. I'm gonna talk to you about the app. So if you are on, pop in the comments and let me know where in the world are you and are you watching with your dog? Um, let me know. And I also, I'm curious as well, curious, I'd like to know, were you signed up for the challenge? Um, and are you still going to do some training even though we've had to postpone the challenge? That's two big questions. Let's start with the easy question. Where in the world are you and are you watching with your dog? Okay, so three things to talk about today. The first thing we're gonna talk about is the biggest decision you're going to make when it comes to doing your separation anxiety training. The second thing we're going to talk about is how you're actually going to get on and do the training. And then we will, oh my goodness, we'll talk about um, how you can use the next few days to go off and do your thing. All right, let me just open a couple of windows. Mm -mm -mm. Where are we? Uh -uh -uh. Where have we gone? There it is. Norway, oh my goodness, we've got somebody in Norway. Um, uh, Golden Retriever Sven. Jane is in Spark, Nevada and on YouTube. Hi on YouTube. Man Cat is watching with Charlie. Hey bud, purse, leave it. Oh my goodness, he's got rays of burn and he keeps looking at it. Um, Denver, Colorado, watching with my two fur babies. Um, Gemma says my dogs are fast asleep and Amy's in the UK. All right, so next question. Um, you've obviously joined because I'm guessing you want to get on and do some training this weekend. But yeah, just give me a yes that even though it's like it's Sunday, Saturday evening in the UK, it's getting late in the US, give me a yes in the box if you're still gonna take the next two or three days and even just do one training session. As I put in my email today, I'm a really big fan of don't put up a zero. And what, what I mean by that is, if you can't, say if you're a runner and you wanted to do a 10K run, but all of a sudden you've only got 10 minutes. Running for 10 minutes is better than running for no minutes. And that's why I got up today and thought, okay, I can't do what I wanted to do, but I can do, still do something. So it's not the full thing, but I'm hoping that you will still do something too. Because I say it to the people in my Separation Anxiety Heroes membership all the time. Never put up a zero, just do what you can. Anita says yes. Brilliant, Julie says yes. Okay, fantastic, fantastic. All right, so the first, the big decision before we get into how to use the app is where are you going to start? Now, if you've done no training before, hold on a second, I'm gonna get you covered in one moment. If you've already been training, maybe you've used the book, maybe you've been doing your own thing, tell me where you've got to. And I want you to answer this question. Do you have a sense of your dog's really, really consistent time? So I don't mean what's the best time your dog's ever done in training. I mean, what's the time that you would bet a hundred pounds or a hundred dollars, and they're nearly equivalent these days, which is crazy, that your dog could do today. So maybe your dog has done 10 minutes or maybe your dog's done an hour. But you might say to me, Julie, I think that my dog, if I were to put money on it, could do five minutes. That's the absolute guaranteed time. Or maybe it's five seconds. So if you've already started training, pop in the comments and tell me the answer to that question. I call it the $100 or 100 pound time. What's the time that you think your dog could absolutely do? Let me go back into the 
questions. Oh, I might not do any training, got COVID, so I have to be careful with what I can do. Oh, boo to that, definitely. Um, mm -mm -mm, one minute guaranteed. A few people are asking how I get the app. You can still sign up. We were gonna do a three day challenge, which involved getting the app. Um, and if you still want to sign up for that, we had to change plans because of a sick pup, but you could still do that. Okay, so, so brilliant. So many of you know that. Um, mm, 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 mm. Great, all right. So keep that time in mind. Keep that time in mind because you're gonna use it in a second. How many of you, so we've got the camp of we're training and we know roughly how long the $100 time is. So that's your camp one, your group one, okay? Group one, I'm kind of putting you over there. The second group, if you've been training but you still can't get out of the door, let me know in the comments. And by the way, if you've not done any training at all or no idea what Julie's going on about, what is she going on about? I've got you covered in a second, so hold on. So if you can't do any training at all, if you've done training, sorry, but you can't get out of the door, give me a yes in the box. Oh, man, he's dropped right back. Probably guarantee three minutes now. What happened? Jane, I'm gonna cover you off in a second because Jane says, this is a good question that we are going to cover in a second. Jane says, I'm unclear what the threshold is or should I be calling the, the calling, or should be for calling the time, right? Barking, whining, or the actual meltdown. I'm gonna cover that in a second. Um, okay, so lots of you know your time. So Stacy, you're in the, I have been doing this, but I can't get out of the door. Yes, says Gemma, buddy can't handle any time. All right, so for all of you, I'm gonna put you in group B. And group B, when I come to show you what to do in the app, I've got you covered too. So we've got the people who know what time their, their dog can do. We've got the people who can't even get out of the door, even though they've been training. Then my third group, my group C. And Jane, you're going to fall into this group potentially because you're still, I think, working out what time do I start on. Here's the thing. If you don't know what time to start on, you can do two things. You can work out what time to start on by doing a baseline. And I talk about that in my book. And when you get access to the app, there is a video within the app that's going to show you how to do that. However, you don't even need to do that. You could start with doing door as a ball. So if you're unsure what your dog's threshold is, if you don't want to put your dog through a baseline assessment, which can stress them out sometimes, then you can start with door as a ball. And this is gonna be great if you want to use the app this weekend, but you're saying to me, oh, wait a minute, how do I know what my dog does when I'm out of the door because I can't watch my dog? Most of you I know have got a camera, but not everybody has. So if you don't have a camera, but you want to do some training this weekend, do what I call door is a bore. And a few of me, you are saying that. So Anna Marika is still, still working on that. And I know that you've been um, working on that for some time, Anna Marika. The moment um, we open the door, he's anxious. Uh, Karen says, I can't go out of the door without barking or crying. Um, so you are not alone. It's, it's really common. And that's often the, the place where most dogs start. And by the way, when you look at the success stories in the group or when I talk about them, whether you're in my paid membership or whether you're in the free group, everybody who's talking about getting to two hours or three hours or four hours, just know that they started where you are today. They either started with a dog who freaked out as soon as they thought about opening the door or they started with a dog who could only handle like two or three seconds. So when you look at those big numbers and those success stories, I want you to know that everybody starts out where you are now. Um, so let me just get back to a few of your questions. Mm -mm -mm -mm. If doing door is a bore and there are two doors, right, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna save that question too because that's a really good one. Tanya says, I've been working on door is a bore last couple of days. And Gemma Jaima says, I have buddy too. All right, so I will, I'm gonna demo the app and tell you when you're going to get the app. I'm not gonna demo the app actually because that will just send you to sleep. I'm just gonna show you two quick things. When you open up the app, there's a demo in the app. So I'm not gonna bore you with that today, but I want you to tell, I want to tell you where you're going to start. All right, my group A's. 
If you already know what time your dog can do, your hundred dollar, your dog's hundred dollar time, then you are going to, let me just go back to here. Why has that gone really small? I'm going to share my screen and I'm world's worst multitasker. So I am going to just do this. Why won't it let me do that? There we go. All right, so I'm going to share my screen. And can you see that? Give me a heads up if you can see that. Um, so what's the name of the app? It's called the Be Right Back training app and it's exclusive to my Separation Anxiety Heroes membership. So no, you can't buy it in the app store and you can't buy it on the Play Store, but you are getting um, access to it for free for a few days at the moment. So this is the, if you've, oh, let me get rid of this screen as well, because that's obscuring things. <laughs> think this is gonna work yay okay now let me share my screen again <laughs> I have very little sleep last night because I've got a dog with a really bad tummy so let me share my screen boom there we go back in the room yes it disappeared briefly but it's back all right so if you're in group A you know what time your dog can do you're going to do this once you set up on the app and you're going to get an email in about two hours time that's going to tell you how to register once you are registered you're going to come to a screen like this and i want you to click on the button here training in fact all of you are going to click on the training button all right so click on the training button if you know what time your dog can do click on this button departures okay now if Again, you know what time your dog can do. Click on this button, custom duration, and put that time you just told me, that time you just said, whether it's 15 seconds or a minute and 30 seconds, put it in here. So let's say it was 15 seconds. I'm gonna put zero, I'm gonna put 15. Leave everything else the same and then click go. And there you have it. The app has just generated an exercise, exercise for you. I'm not going to, as I said, I'm not going to demo it because there is a demo in the app. How do you find that? Click on this little um, button here, how to videos, and you're going to get a quick guide to the app. All right. So that's my group A's. I hope that's not my dog going to the door to go out, but we'll see. My group B's. These are the, you are the ones who are still working on Dora the Boar. It's good. And you know, I say, I say still, but the thing about Dory's Abort is it's great foundational training. It teaches dogs that there's nothing in it for them when doors open. And that's always a really helpful thing. But you're going to work on Dory's Abort, not surprisingly. So click on training, click on Dory's Abort, and you're going to get to where you need to go to. All right. If you've already done Dory's Abort, you can start pick the level that you want to start at. And it's got all the levels that are outlined in the book. You're going to click on a step and you're going to repeat it 10 times. You know how it goes. You've done this before. If you've not, yes, I do want to go back. I don't care if my progress is lost. If you don't know where to start because you're worried about doing a baseline, you haven't had a chance to do a baseline, or you haven't got a camera this weekend, start with door as a bore. So you're my group C's. All right. So group A's, you know what time you're on, you're going to start with training and you're going to put in a custom duration, really important, your baseline time, the time you're starting with goes in custom duration. If everybody else is going to do door is a bore. All right, let me go back to your questions then. Um, mm -mm -mm. So let's move on to talk about any questions you've got about training. So I'm just going to go back to here. What can I help you with? What do you feel stuck on? What do you need to know? Um, let me just, yeah, Tammy. Mm -mm -mm. What do you do better if your pup does better as one departure instead of lots of steps? Lots of repetitions really helps because the more times you get out of the door successfully, the more you're giving your dog the message that this is okay and it's safe. But sometimes, Tammy, they can get a bit wound up with the coming and going. Some dogs love it and do better with that. Some dogs do worse. So first thing to do, try to take more time between each step 
and see if that helps. At the moment, you might be taking a minute, double it or even triple it. How are you doing okay, pups? <laughs> um, if that doesn't help, Tammy, then what you can do is you just can split the uh, exercise up during the day to do a couple of steps or do one step. Repetition really helps. So the more you can do it, the better, even if you're splitting it up throughout the day. Um, mm -mm. Um, I don't know who you are because Facebook's not showing me your name. How do I get free access to the apps? When I go to your page, it requires signing up, paying to get access. Correct. So if you want to join my Separation Anxiety Heroes membership, which is about the app, but way more than the app, that's that, I think that's the page that you must be on. But we're doing a little thing at the moment where I'm just giving people um, a few days to trial the app for free. And it was as part of a challenge that didn't happen because my pup got really sick. So you can still join the challenge. Um, you can still register for the challenge because then we've got your name and then you'll get the app. Um, let me see. Sarah, could I just double check what group, uh, what group? Um, what does one do? Uh, uh, uh. Oh, <laughs> sorry. What does group one do? Okay, fine. Sarah, if you know your time, go into the app, click training, click custom duration, off you go. All right, put the time in the custom duration in the app. Okay, next question. Mm -mm -mm. Let me go through. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Victoria, um, my house, there's rarely every, everyone out. How often should I, should I train? So I feel like this is my mantra for everything today. Never put up a zero. So never putting up a zero not only means, um, you know, if you've only got five minutes and you wanted to do train for 30, still do five minutes. But it can also mean do the training even though the conditions aren't ideal. So for you, Victoria... Door is a board is going to be great because that's going to work whether there's anybody, there's nobody in the house or somebody in the house. So door is a board is always a good one. And then if you really can't persuade people to leave, and I get it, I really get it. I work with so many people for whom this is a problem, whether it's flatmates, housemates, kids, um, you know, other halves. I've seen it all. So if that's you and you're struggling to get people to go out the house, struggle is real, then do the training anyway. And if you can find one or two occasions a week where there's nobody at home, fantastic. So don't put up the zero because something is always better than nothing. And if you wait for the ideal, it might never happen. Yeah, Vicky, you can, yes. Can you run both training methods together? So what if we can't do departure one day? Can we do Dora Zabora instead? Oh my goodness, this is my theme, isn't it? Yeah, I never put a zero. Yes, you can. Now, you don't, once you get onto departures, Vicky, you don't have to keep doing door as a bore as well. So you don't have to. Why? Because when you do departures, you're kind of doing a form of door as a bore anyway, because you're going in and out of the door. But you've hit the nail on the head. On those days where you don't have the time, it's perfect. It's absolutely perfect to um, do door as a bore. Okay, next one. Okay, so yeah, how can I identify when I need to give my dog some easy wins or for how long should I do the easy wins for? So everything we do should be easy. When we do when we're getting we're changing a dog's emotion, the steps we do should be easy. Um there's long and there's short, there's longer and there's shorter but they should be easy. Because if we're if they're too challenging, then what we're doing is we're risking our dogs getting even just a little bit anxious is what we want to avoid. So if we think about it in terms of not easy, but long or short, then short is just gonna be shorter than the duration that you're working on. And that's what the warm ups are. So if you get, when you get to about a minute or more, those warm ups are much shorter than the duration. So the duration, the target duration shouldn't be hard. It's just that those shorter durations, I mean, they're, they're a shoe in. They should be so short that there's no question that your dog's gonna do it. So yeah, simple as that. Mm -mm. Yeah, very much so. Um, can separation anxiety be situational? I can leave in the day, but not in the evening. 
interestingly, um, this is really common. It's really common that dogs do differently well at different times of the day, different days of the week even, or with different people leaving. Different weather affects some dogs. It's, more, less un, it's less usual, it's more uncommon to see dogs who are perfectly fine like yours is during the day, but not okay in the evening. But it's just a continuation of that concept that some dogs, most dogs, actually I think most dogs do better at certain under certain conditions. So you've just got one of those dogs. Um, what, what do you do? You're gonna focus on training in the evening and you're gonna take comfort from the fact that your dog is showing you they can be alone, they just need to learn it in a different context. Yep, so that's a very similar question. Why can I leave Buddy in the car and in other people's houses but not mine, it's only, only the flat? If only we knew. The only way we'd ever be able to work that out is to go inside their heads. And so the answer I give to that question, why? Why did they do differently well at different times is because dog. Buddy has just worked out in his own little way that this one's okay and that one's not okay. But again, you should take comfort from the fact that he can be okay in certain contexts. He just needs to learn it in others. My, I actually had a dog. I still got Percy. But when he had separation anxiety, he was okay in the car sometimes. But that was also very contextual. So we could leave him in the car um, on a cool day, say outside of a, a store or a shop. But it had to be one he knew. It's kind of funny. He didn't like it if it was a different one. Um, if we have two pups, should we work one at a time? Do you have two pups with separation anxiety? Um, if so, go at the pace of the dog that is the most anxious. Um, if not, you can work with both of them anyway. And then you can just, um, the only time it gets really complicated is if there's one dog triggering the other and getting the other dog upset. And then you would want to um, think about just creating some space in the home. Mm -hmm. mm -mm. Um, keep your questions coming I'm going to try and get to most of them if I can I'm just going to go back yeah this one is real cat uh, getting buy in from my husband I've got a podcast episode on that because uh, it is uh, it's, it's that one is that's another real struggle <laughs> yeah <clears throat> my dog sleeps happily in the lounge overnight uh, with the door closed when I leave her, should I shut her in the lounge or with the run of the house like she has when I'm home? You, you Try it out. So most dogs do better with more space when you leave them, when you're trying to do separation anxiety training. And just because she sleeps happily in the lounge over the night with the door closed, might not transfer. Big theme here, isn't it though? We're talking about dogs doing differently well in different setups. So just test it out and see. See if she does better with the lounge door closed or see if she does better with it open. And that reminds me, somebody asked me a question about multiple doors. Um, if you ask me the question about multiple doors and I can't find it, oh, here it is. Okay. Um, there are two doors we exit from. Should we train one door at a time or mix it up? Um, there's a depends here and the depends is if you can get through both doors be without your dog getting upset, then you can work both doors. And then actually one door becomes almost irrelevant because they're not triggered by that second door, or it's usually the first door they're not as triggered by. It kind of depends. Um, if you find that you open that inside door, is it are the doors quite close to one another? That also affects the decision. Or are we talking about you know a living room door and then a front door? If it's two doors quite close together, usually we can, we can do door as a ball with the two doors. If it's two doors further apart, more often than not, we have to separate things out. Uh, Tammy asks, how many times a day do you do door as a ball? This is something you can do quite frequently because you can do it for five minutes here or 10 minutes there. So Tammy, this could be where you're splitting up the training because you mentioned that your dog doesn't like lots of repetitions of you leaving. So you could do this multiple times. Mm -mm. Um, mm -mm, mm -mm. let me see okay so 
Oh, these are such good questions. Oh, good one, Nicola. What happens, uh, what's supposed to happen, says Nicola, when I do door as a bore because my dog just stands staring at me. And the magic mat training is in the book because, uh, and it is the magic mat training in the book because I have a Velcro dog, yes. So um, staring at you is fine and you're doing something really weird. You're going in and out of the front door and that's repeatedly, and that's just odd to dogs. Even when you do door as a bore, you're just walking to the door and back they're like most dogs would go what are you doing so staring is fine we just want to make sure there's no anxiety with that so look for things like panting like um enlarged eyes really stiff body or they might be pacing around a bit they might be really really tense and shuffling so look for other signs of anxiety too but if they're just staring at you and following you it's just because they think you're doing something a bit weird and yes magic mat is in the book Mm -mm -mm. Uh, 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 uh. Um, when I add in extra pre-departure triggers, should I bring the departure time back or stay at the same time as before? So if you're talking about something that is really going to upset your dog, there's lots of things we do before we leave, but not everything makes our dog anxious. So you're narrowing down presumably the things that make your dog anxious, not that make your, let your dog know that you're leaving, but that when you do these things, it, your dog not only knows you're leaving, but your dog gets anxious too. So because they're going to make your dog anxious, there's a really good chance you will have to reduce the duration. Another way to um, tackle it is to do and I, we can use the method door as a bore for anything. We can bo teach dogs that anything is inconsequential and not scary. And um, so, for example, we can do key as a bore or bag as a bore or purse as a bore. So if you've got, say, picking up keys makes your dog really anxious, then going through the departures is going to be tricky. So you're better off to, te to teach your dog in a separate exercise that you picking up keys isn't threatening or scary and then bring them back together. But if you do want to bring them together, then yes, drop your drop your duration. Mm -mm. Yeah, is it true that you should never create a dog with separation anxiety? My dog is a danger to himself. Such a tricky one because Kat, I'm guessing that your dog is, when you leave, is getting into stuff or you know ripping nails or all of that stuff so and i've got a dog at the moment i'm keeping my eyes on 24 7 because he's not doing that but he's creating hot spots from where he's been shaved and had um procedures done yesterday so if your dog is a danger to themselves then you've got to ask yourself why is that the reason that your dog is doing that cat when you leave is it's anxiety they're panicky they're you know they're in a massive old freak out so can you contain that panic with a crate mm, maybe and there are indestructible crates that supposedly do that but i've seen some horrific injuries in so-called indestructible and i hate the word anxiety crate that just drives me up the wall um so the better thing to do is to say well what's causing the anxiety what's causing the anxiety is home alone time so if we get your dog to be comfortable with home alone time, then that dangerous behavior will disappear because the behavior is driven by the emotion. So we have to work on the emotion. The thing about the crate is it's not gonna change how a dog feels about being left. And actually for most dogs with separation anxiety, it makes them feel more scared about being left. Yes, I love dogs having dog interaction. They are, you know, they are social animals. They love being with us, but in but mixing with their own species is so good for their little brains. Um, as you know, it ties them out physically, but it also ties them out mentally. Playing is so important for dogs. Not every dog loves doggy daycare. And I do, um, there are some dogs, particularly our older dogs with separation anxiety who hate doggy daycare. But your dog likes it, so yes, that's perfect. I think that's win-win. Yeah, so I I did um, a Facebook Live on this a few months ago, actually, because my dog Tex had a fear of thunder, which I 
can still cannot believe we've got him over. I mean, will he will he get if there was a thundercrack right over the house, would he get upset now? Oh, maybe, but I don't think he would panic like he used to. So it's definitely worth searching through my videos and having a look for that one. You're welcome, Kat. I'm struggling at the moment because I've got a dog who, um, if I put him in a crate right now, he would lose the, lose the plot. But I want him to be in a certain place so I can watch him so that he doesn't lick himself to pieces. But instead, when I can't watch him, I'm tethering him to me. So I get it. It's, um, you know, it, it, yeah, it would be a great solution. My other dogs are fine in a crate. Yes, I'm all for making training as easy as possible. I, maybe I'm a bit lazy, but if we can manage the situation or do something different rather than train for it, I'm all for that because separation anxiety training, as you know, is hard work. So let's make it as easy as possible. Anna Marika, let's see what's going on with Lewis. He wants to go into the garden always and has problems going to sleep during the day despite our long walks. During the door is a bore exercise and all because others, he becomes more active and doesn't sleep at all anymore. That why I, that, yeah, I can see I'm hesitant to start a training session. He follows me around everywhere. Um, 10 to 20 seconds on a good day. I can go to the toilet alone when he's lying down, but mostly in the evening. So he sounds, I, I can't remember where you got to with anxiety medications, but Lewis has got some generalized anxiety and generalized stress going on there. That's, you know, there's, um, there's active dogs, there's dogs that watch us like hawks. And then there are dogs who are beyond even that and I just think that that's what's going on with Lewis hello Jen so Peyton has been um Percy's been going through what Peyton went through this week how's Peyton doing okay so um a question for all of you hands up then <laughs> give me a yes if you are going to do a training exercise in the next 24 hours. So I'm coming back this time tomorrow and I want to know, do you think you'll have time to do one training exercise? Now, remember, remember I said to you, it, if you've only got five minutes, make it five minutes. So do you think you can find five minutes, maybe more in the next 24 hours to do a training exercise? Maybe add on 10 minutes just to familiarize yourself with the app. How are you going to do that? In about 90 minutes, you're going to get an email with instructions for setting up on the app. So yeah, so that's a little bit of time. So maybe you've only got 20 hours, but by this time tomorrow, see if you've if you can have trained for five minutes and let's treat tomorrow's session as an accountability session. And what we'll do is we'll pop back here. I'll take more questions on the training and how it's going. And we're gonna have some prizes. So if you've trained, by this time tomorrow, you could be in with a chance of winning. All right, does anybody have any final questions about getting started with the app? Because I think the best thing you can do is we'll get you started. Um, and I'm gonna do two more questions before I go. Yes, Sarah, I love you. <laughs> yes, the better and nothing principle applies. And it's always the case. My husband always disagrees with me on this. Um, he's definitely, if I haven't got two hours to go for a mountain bike, why would I ride? Why would I? I'm like, if I've got 30 minutes, I'm going to do it. Um, oh, Tanya, you're amazing. Okay, well, Tanya, you have, um, yes, we'll get that. You'll wake up to the app registration. So you can work on it tomorrow on your Monday. All right, thank you so much. Thank you for bearing with me. And can you adjust the amount of warmth in the apps? Yes, you can, yes, you can. Um, and I'm not gonna go into too much detail about the demo of stuff because there's some really helpful videos in there. There's a video just on how to adjust warm ups. Yeah, thank you for bearing with me. Um, and I will look forward to seeing you this time tomorrow. Am I gonna see you this time tomorrow? Yeah, we got a deal? Brilliant, all right, I'll see you this time tomorrow for a report back on how your training has gone. All right, bye for now, everyone.